Hello, my name is Jeffrey Nicholas. I'm an Associate Professor of Philosophy at Providence College. This is one in a series of lectures on Alastair McIntyre's book, Dependent Rational Animals. And we are looking specifically at Chapter 11, which discusses political social structures of the common good. Uh, so just to remind us uh, where we've been and what we're doing, McIntyre proposed three theses at the beginning of this book. Well, the first one, our resemblance to and commonality with non-human animals, and we have explored that in relationship to uh, beliefs, reasons for action, and pre-linguistic beliefs and reasons for actions that we share with the non-human animal world. So McIntyre concludes that we cannot separate ourselves entirely from this non-human animal world, and that our human identity is primarily, even if not only bodily and thus animal, the second thesis is that there are virtues of independence that go hand in hand with virtues of not acknowledged dependence, and we have discussed those virtues in the last couple of lectures. And finally, the modern nation state and the modern family can provide no structures that are needed to develop the, the virtues. And so that's what we're moving into now uh, with this uh, lecture here, right? So we're going to focus on the problem, problems with the modern nation state, particularly in relationship to those virtues. But at the root of this is our uh, commonality with the non-human animal. So what are the conditions of political society? Well, McIntyre identifies three uh, conditions. So a political society should afford expression to the political decision-making of independent practical reasoners on all matters important to members of a particular community arrive through shared rational deliberation to a common mind. So most of this book, we've been talking about what it means to be an independent practical reasoner and that flourishing for human beings as a particular species that we are involves this uh, independent practical reasoning. And so if we're going to be independent practical reasonings within that requires communities and networks of giving and receiving, then our political society should allow the expression of that power of practical reasoning where we arrive through a shared deliberation to a common mind. That's what the political society should express. Okay. What is it that our common mind has come to through this shared deliberation. That is a far cry, of course, from uh, the modern nation state, and we'll talk more about that in just a second. Second, uh, the conditions of political society should establish norms of justice, which align with the exercise of just generosity. And we talked about the virtue of just generosity in the last couple of chapters. Uh, so this is there's no single type of community that does this, right? There are a variety of communities that can uh, instantiate the exercise is just generosity, but the community must be able to do that if it's going to be one that allows human flourishing. And so uh, the communist community can provide an idea here for what is needed because of the idea of from each according to her or his ability and to each so far as possible according to her or his or her needs. And so what we're looking at here, of course, is the, uh, the, the dependency that we have as human animals in relationship to our community. So we each need to take from that community so that we can develop into uh, independent practical reasoners, but we also need to give back. And again, this is not about strict reciprocity as McIntyre has uh, uh, argued throughout. And then finally, we wanna make possible that everyone, uh, those who exercise independent practical reasoning, those whose ability is limited, has a voice about the norms of justice. And so this ties in uh, with the first and second conditions, because of course it's that independent practical reasoning through which we uh, exercise our species human power and come to that common mind. So we wanna make sure that everyone is able to, to uh, contribute to that. And then second, that our uh, norms of just generosity mean that we make it as possible, uh, as much as possible, right? Because we give to each according to their needs the participation of each person in establishing those norms of justice. The modern nation state, of course, does not do that, right? The modern nation state works not to 
articulate or to instantiate the articulation of the common mind of the people through rational deliberation, rather what it does is it works on compromises between conflicting economic and social interests. So what's important for the modern nation state is bargaining. And we've seen that uh, in the last uh, couple of years, uh, but particularly with uh, the uh, example of COVID and um, the relief that was given to uh, various individuals and corporations uh, by the uh, elected legislature, legislators uh, to help mitigate the factors of uh, shutting down the economy. And so what we saw here is a bargaining between those who wanted to protect uh, big corporations. And so we saw lots of money given to big corporations and those who wanted to protect uh, those who uh, simply don't have enough money to go through uh, long stages of, of uh, unemployment. And so we saw a little bit of money given there. And uh, the bargaining was uh, within uh, the uh, legislature, but also without uh, and what was going on there, as we saw. And of course, there was bargaining about what we do uh, to protect ourselves uh, from COVID as well, right? In this situation, money is power, okay? And there's no way around that within a, uh, a capitalistic market-driven society, money becomes power. And so it corrupts the uh, possibilities of human uh, deliberation so that what happens is money overrides that deliberation and bargaining is all that's left to do. And those with the most money have the most bargaining power. So the distribution of goods does not reflect the common mind achieved, right? Uh, we saw this particularly uh, at the, uh, in 2007, 2008 with the uh, economic crisis caused by the banks. And instead of the uh, goods being distributed to those who needed housing, we saw those goods given to those who caused the crisis. So in fact, uh, in 2008, there were more empty houses than there were homeless people but the government did nothing to help those who'd lost their homes because of uh, poor, uh, uh, buying into poor uh, 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 housing loans and did lots to uh, help the banks who knew what they were doing, okay? Uh, another critique of the nation state, and we've seen this as a cause of many problems within the 20th century, is the idea of the people of the nation state as a volk, as, as people of uh, hearth and blood, uh, kinfolk who are identified as one. This, of course, led to uh, the uh, Nazi uh, extermination or attempted extermination of uh, Jewish people within the uh, German Reichstag. Uh, but we also see this in arguments against immigration in the United States and in arguments for Brexit uh, in the United Kingdom, where there was the idea that we are Americans, we can't let these people come in and take our jobs. And the same thing, we are British, we cannot let these people come in and take our jobs or our money, and we can't give our money to these other people, right? And so there's an illusion here that stops us from exercising just generosity and misericordia to where we respond to those who are in need. And so rather than responding to the conditions that led people, for instance, to flee uh, problematic situations in South America and come to the United States for asylum and relief, we separated families at the border and uh, said it was the family's fault and the children's fault that they were here illegally. Uh, finally, local communities must uh, be able, be wary of entanglements with the nation state if they're going to try to articulate that shared common mind through deliberation. They're going to need to rely on some things from the nation state, uh, and yet they have to be wary of how that might entangle them in uh, power plays within the nation state and where they might lose. And we see this, of course, in many cases with Native Americans. Uh, and so the No Dapple movement was a movement uh, by uh, First Nation peoples of America, particularly the Lakota uh, in um, uh, the um, Sacred Heart camp in Dakota to protest the um, uh, Dakota Access Pipeline that was rerouted from Bismarck to uh, the reservation because the people of Bismarck had more bargaining power 
than the people of the reservation. So the United States, who promised to protect Native American land and gave them this reservation as their own, violated that reservation promise because they had the power to do so. And we saw this again in many cases uh, with the treatment of Native Americans, but also with Blacks uh, throughout uh, the centuries of the United States. Within this situation, the modern family is not one that is able, in many cases, to help children to develop as independent practical reasoners. One reason for that is because the, the modern family requires a local community in which that family can be involved and in which children can learn the virtues of relationships of giving and receiving. In most modern communities, particularly in the United States, whether we're talking about uh, urban communities as in New York or uh, Providence, Rhode Island, or we're talking about uh, suburban communities, or we're talking about really rural communities, those relationships of giving and receiving are put in jeopardy because of the demands of the market. If you've seen the movie um, uh, Food, Inc., you can recognize this by the way that uh, various uh, agribusinesses jeopardize local family farms uh, and remove the possibility of that community to develop itself and to develop those relationships of giving and receiving because the agribusiness needs that, that uh, profit that they're going to take from the local farm and take over that local farm. The modern state itself threatens local communities, right? And it makes it difficult for families to succeed in teaching the virtues. Uh, and uh, here the family is conceived as distinct and separate from the social unit. And so the family is seen as something private and the social unit is something public. And this is, of course, something that uh, feminists have uh, railed against in the last couple of decades. And yet what we see more and more is that the state treats the family as something private that it cannot get involved in. Families are not enough. We need local communities to develop these relationships of giving and receiving. And certainly COVID has taught us that, that it was in those um, communities and not within the larger nation state where we were able to protect ourselves and to develop those relationships of giving and receiving. And yet what the nation state does is try to curtail that and make it impossible for those communities to survive because it challenges uh, both the market and the power within the nation state. The community then must also, because it is a foundation of uh, relationships of giving and receiving, and because we are trying to articulate this common mind through shared deliberation, make it so that the disabled are uh, uh, given a place at the table for conversation. Right, And we have to remember that every member of the community is someone from whom we can learn. McIntyre gives the example of the severely disfigured as just one example of whom we can learn from because what that helps us to do is re realize our own prejudices uh, when we look at people and how we judge them based off of looks. But he also says that we can learn uh, much from the severely disabled and particularly we can learn uh, what it is to give ourselves over in care to others and what it is to act as a proxy for someone. And this helps us to understand what it means to act as a friend. So we can learn from the disabled and they uh, can learn from us. And so here the disabled is, are as much a part of the community as uh, any able-bodied person. And of course, uh, emphasizing throughout that at many times in our lives, uh, we are in situations of disablement. The other thing that we have to remember is that political reasoning is our everyday reasoning. And I think this is something that we forget in our modern society because we think of politics as something that happens every few years, right? We go to the poll and vote and then we stop, right? And we don't want to talk about politics at the Thanksgiving table or any other time. And yet, what McIntyre is arguing is that because we are independent practical reasoners and because we need those relationships of giving and receiving, that that political reasoning is our everyday reasoning because it's only as uh, we are able to identify the goods that we share with others that we are able to identify our own goods, whether that's within the family or within the workplace, right? because many of these goods are shared. And he gives the example of the local theater, right? We can't know what the local theater means to us until we deliberate about that. And so everyday activity is political activity for McIntyre and for uh, flourishing human communities. 
What we do learn from lessons of community studies is that deliberate rationality is imperfect, and yet that politics of the new local communities is not about com competing interests, but about learning what we can learn from each other, and that means giving to the needs of children and the disabled.